So this video is going to talk you through all the different steps of using SOLIDWORKS to create a drill gauge. So first of all, you go to Start, All Programs, Departmental Student Software, Design Technology, and SOLIDWORKS 2016 64-bit. When you first launch it, depending on what computer you get to use, you might have some uh, boxes at the front that uh, ask you where you're going to save your work. Um, I might get that in a minute, I'm not too sure. Uh, if you do, you just need to tell it that your work is going to get saved into your documents. So let's see. Now mine's already set up, but when you do this for the first time, um, it will ask you where do you want to save your work, you select my documents, and then off you go. Now for this, we're going to make a part. Later on we'll learn how to make an assembly by joining different parts together. And then we're going to make a drawing, but for now we're going to use the parts option. So select that and press OK. And when you start SolidWorks, page is empty and there's nothing on it. So to start drawing, you need to tell it where you're going to put your your objects. And because this is going to be a flat object, we want to work from the top upwards. So the plane we're going to start drawing on is going to be the top one. If it was a different object oriented a different way, we might use the front or the right. But for this, we're going to use top. So go to top plane on the left, click on it. Now, when you select a plane, these fly out menu options will appear. You've got sketch, show, zoom to selection, and normal to. And these are all quite useful. We're certainly going to use normal to later, which is the blue rectangle with an arrow coming upwards. But the most important one here is sketch. So we've clicked the top plane. Now we're going to tell it to we want to sketch on that plane. So top plane followed by sketch. As soon as you hit sketch, it flattens it out into a two-dimensional view so you can see what you're doing. And we're going to select a corner rectangle. So up on the top in the sketch menu, go to corner rectangle and click to start your rectangle in the center. Of the axes like like that click to start and then click to finish it doesn't matter how big it is because we're now going to use the smart dimension to size it up so click smart dimension click on one of the lengths click on the edge pull out and then click again to drop the measurement down now the measurement we need is 120 so 120 followed by enter on the keyboard and that's set that length now as 120 the next one is the width Click, pull out, and click, and that one we're going to set as 50. Enter. So that is our length and width set. Now we're ready now to turn that into 3D as if we were going to make a piece of metal. We might get given a piece of metal this size. Um, so we need to turn it into 3D. Now the metal that we're going to use is 3 millimeters thick. So we're now going to turn it into a th 3 millimeter thick piece of uh, three dimensional material. So we've finished our dimensions. We can hit the tick button, close dialog, to say OK. And then, now that we've drawn our first sketch, we can go to the features tab and hit extruded boss base. So that's when we draw a sketch and we want to turn it into 3D to extrude. So we hit extruded boss base, and you can see there it's turned it into a 3D 3D shape. It's given us some thickness, but we want to set it to be three millimeters thick. Now you can drag the little arrow there, one, two, three, I've gone to four, or you can use this box over here and type in your, num your number of units. So three, enter, not 35, three. And that's the thickness of the material. Again, if you want to pull it out more, you can. But for this, we're going to do it at three. And then when you've done that, you can hit the tick. And we've made our first three dimensional object. So at this point, what you can try and do is get used to using the 3D tools. So first have a go at using the mouse button to scroll in and scroll out. So that lets you zoom in and zoom out. And sometimes it's quite easy to zoom too far. If you do, just press the F button on your keyboard and that will fit it back onto the screen. Again, if you zoom too far out the other way, press F 
and so on. So just have a play with your mouse wheel going in and out to zoom. You can also use your mouse wheel to spin the object around. Now this is really useful when you want to get to the back or the sides of the object to select faces to put bits on. You need to press your mouse wheel in. So that's to roll it up and down to zoom. But if you press it down, then you can actually move all the way around it. So that's very useful. There's another way of positioning yourself in a three-dimensional space to see what you're doing, which is to hit the space bar on your keyboard. As soon as you press space bar, you get these two options. First of all, you get this nice little 3D cube, which lets you select the sides or the top or the different angled views so that's really useful press spacebar and have a play around with that when you also press spacebar you get these options where you can default to view it in isometric like this or you've got other views again to look at the object from the top from the front from the side from the back and so on so that's a really good way of seeing around it otherwise you can just press the mouse button in the mouse wheel in and manipulate your way around that way there are other viewing options but we'll leave it at that for the time being next thing to do is to cut a bit of the material off so we need to select the top of our drill gauge like this and we're going to draw on it but it's much easier to draw on it if it's flat so we right click and use this normal to button so it's the blue rectangle with the arrow so that flattens it out nice and neatly so we need to go into the sketch option and use the line tool and we're going to start drawing a line from the top left hand corner so when you get that orange dot click and come across about a third of the way along and then come down, this time at a slight angle, click, and then this time go all the way to the end until you hit the edge and you get locked onto the end and it will go orange on that line. Click. Now you'll need to press uh, escape to finish drawing the line. And when you finish drawing the line, it should look something like this. So we've drawn one, two, three lines. Now, they're a bit of random sizes, so we need to set the sizes of those. Go onto Smart Dimension again. Click. We'll start with this line. We're going to click on that and pull it out. Now, that measurement there, when we pull it out, we want that to be 35. So we type in 35, followed by Enter. Now, this one, we don't set the length, but what we do set is the angle. Um, there's another thing that we can do here but I'll show you how to set the angle first so we still on smart dimension click on this line and then come across and click on this line and in between those it's setting the angle now you don't want to use the, the large angle so if you move it this way to the left that will set the smaller angle so we can click to put the angle and we want that angle to be 60 degrees so we type in 6 0 enter so that's now set that at the right distance. What we haven't done is set the distance from the end. So again, we're going to use Smart Dimension to click here, followed by here. And that distance there needs to be 15. So 1, 5. So we've locked it in. We've got 60 degrees here, 15 millimeters from the top, and 35 millimeters from the left hand side. And that is all we're going to need so we can click the tick to say OK. Again, you can use your spacebar to put it into isometric or whatever so you can see what you're doing in 3D. And we're going to cut this section away. So, to do that, we go into features, we go to extruded cut, and we click. Well, it should already be selected, but if it's not, you might have to just click on that little section at the top. But I think we've already got it selected. So we've clicked extruded cut and you can see that the the cuts that it's going to perform is going to go downwards and away so that's okay just keep it on blind yeah keep it on blind click the tick and you should be done now next job 
is going to be to put some holes for your drill gauge running through the center of this. So we're going to select the top surface and again use the right click to go normal to so we get it nice and flat and we're going to put a construction line down the middle so we need to be in sketch mode and we're going to use a center line here so click on the little arrow next to the line go to center line and over on the right here if we hover over this line by hovering on this side it's going to automatically detect the halfway point on that edge so when you get that little square in the middle that's your halfway point click there and then draw a nice center line running all the way through your object like that uh, you might need to hit escape to come out of it and then we next thing you're going to do is to draw some circles so we need to go to the circle tool make sure it's a center circle not a perimeter circle and we're going to draw eight circles at different points along here so we'll start on the left and work our way across so we'll start by drawing a circle here doesn't matter what size then another one two i'm going to try and make them all different sizes two three four five six seven eight so i've not measured any of those and they're not really in the right position but i've got eight circles the next job is to use the smart dimension to get them all in the right place and all at the right size so we hit smart dimension now we're going to first of all set the distance from this left edge so we click the left edge and then the center of our circle and I'm going to pull this off off the page so it's not getting in my way but that distance there needs to be 14 so 1 4 enter and that's set the distance at 14 millimeters away now what next next thing we need to do is to say how big that circle is going to be so click on it and pull it out and that one needs to be 10 10 enter and that's our first one now we do the same thing again we click the edge click the center of the circle come down and click again now that dimension there needs to be 30 three zero enter the size of that if we come up to the top is going to be nine and the pattern is going to go like this the large one is ten next one is nine next one is eight seven six five four three um, but it's the distances at the bottom that you've got to got to try and uh, get absolutely spot on. So we've done the first two. And that is now it's a little bit untidy, but that's exactly how we want our drill gauge to look. They're all starting off on the center line. We've got 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. So all of those holes are perfectly in the right position. Now all we've got to do is extrude them to cut away. So we can OK our dimension. We can go to features. Uh, if you want to put it into isometric and see that in 3D, then we can go to extruded cut. And it's got all of those holes selected already. We've got a little yellow preview if any of them don't show up you might have to click on the edge of them just to make sure that they show up and we're going to have those going through all and then okay and there we go we've got our we've got our drill gauge with our holes cut all the way through there there's a couple of things that are left to do on this before it's finished and one of them is to put some numbers on to say which one is which. But before we do that, we need to round off and put a couple of fillets on some of the edges. So we'll stay in the features features menu. We're going to go to fillet. 
And what fillet does is round off the corner. So this is quite a nice little tool to use. And we're going to round off all of them except this corner. So we're going to go one, two, three corners to round off. So let's move it so we can access that corner there. And click. Now it's asking me what the radius wants to be. Now we want the radius of that to be six. So we can type it in there, six and enter. Uh, or you could do it over on the left over there. And we're going to go around and put another one on here. Spin it around and put another one on here. And that should be enough so we can say OK to those. Then you can see it's rounded those those three corners off for us. Right, the only thing that's left now is to put some text on. So we're going to use the same technique of selecting the surface, right clicking to go normal to, and in the sketch tool, sketch menu at the top, we're going to use the text text icon there and you can do it underneath or above it doesn't really matter and you might have to do each one each number at a time but we'll see whichever one works best for you type my text in here so let's start with 10 um, we can set the type of properties that we've got on on the text um, can rotate, set it as bold. Um, if you uncheck document fonts, you can set your fonts style according to the ones that we've got in school. Uh, probably the best one for this is this because it has got rounded edges so it looks the same as it would be if you were going to emboss it or cut it with a CNC machine. So let's do 10 there. Uh, you could experiment by doing nine and as long as you know how many spaces are in between each one like I'm doing here um, you might be able to get away with putting the whole the whole selection of numbers in space 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 seven put a few more spaces in there to line it up in that six five four three and again just sort of use the spaces there to push them along a bit all right i think they're lined up quite well so we can leave that as that is we can change those if you wanted to but i'm going to say okay so we've got some text on final thing is to emboss them and you can either have them added on or taken away I'm going to have them taken away so I'll use an extruded cut for this one um, but I don't want it to cut all the way through so I'm just going to go down by 0 0.2 millimeters uh, press the tick to say OK and then that's our that's our drill gauge um, pretty much finished the next stage would be to render it and to make a working drawing. But for now, that'll be it. You can save it and put it into your portfolio ready for the next stage.